A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The abode where jackals lurk will be a marsh for the reed and papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one unclean may pass over it, nor fools go astray on it. No lion will be there, nor beast of prey go up to be met upon it. It is for those with a journey to make, and on it the redeemed will walk. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. Verbum Domini. Our God will come to save us. Our God will come to save us. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Lexio sancti evangelii secundum lucam. Domi ati pietomine. One day as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was with him for healing. And some men brought on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They were trying to bring him in and set him in his presence. 
but not finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and Pharisees began to ask themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them in reply, what are you thinking in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He stood up immediately before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. An astonishment seized them all, and they glorified God, and struck with awe, they said, We have seen incredible things today. Verbum Domini. Brother Bob Fishman is a Jewish man who embraced the Catholic faith. He's made a couple of series on EWTN called The Family Hearth, in which he uses the Jewish practice of the oral teaching practices to teach about the scriptures, to tell stories of the scriptures. He's been on the journey home and on Father Mitch's program as well. And in telling his own story, he talks about a very significant moment that led eventually to his baptism. He'd been raised in a Jewish home, although <clears throat> his parents were not really practicing very much. They would go to the temple twice a year. And he, did, he joined the Navy as a young man. And it was in the Navy in boot camp before he got to boot camp, they asked him, well, do you observe kosher? Well, he had heard that the food in the military is pretty bad, so he said, yes, yes, we observe, I observe kosher, which this family really didn't do. But he thought, well, the food would be better. And they said, well, if you observe kosher, then you have to go to the temple on Saturday. Okay, that's okay. So it was in boot camp that there was a man who kept asking him, are you saved? Are you saved? And in his own words, he became a pest. He's always asking him, are you saved? So he asked his rabbi at the temple, what is our Jewish response to this? He said, we went through 300 prophecies about the Messiah. We talked about them, we debated about them. Does it refer to Israel? Does it refer to the Messiah? And then he goes on to say the conclusion that he came to. <clears throat> he said, finally, after looking at all of these prophecies, discuss, discussing them with his rabbi, I came to the conclusion that the Messiah had to be Jesus. It couldn't be anyone else. The Messiah was from the tribe of Judah, Jesus' tribe. He was of the lineage of David, as Jesus was, born in Bethlehem would be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, pierced, beaten, spat upon, sold for 30 pieces of silver. Even the very donkey on which he rode into Jerusalem was prophesied hundreds of years before it happened. No other religious leader was like that. <clears throat> and he goes on, he says, there are no prophecies of any other religious leaders. Christianity was different. There were over 300 prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament alone. This separates it from all other world religions. It had to be Jesus. 
And I had no choice but to believe. His birth, life, death, and resurrection were predicted hundreds of years before it happened. These prophecies and the fact of their fulfillment literally changed my soul. And so he went to different Christian denominations, eventually was baptized, immersed, and he said there was this fire in my bones. And when I received baptism and I was so enthusiastic about it, I did what any good Jewish boy does, I called my mother. And so he calls his mother and he says, Mom, guess what I did tonight? What's that, honey? I was baptized. Silence. And he said, what's wrong? What you just said is like driving a knife through my heart. And she said, you're no longer my son. She hung up the phone. But then he goes on to tell a very tender story how, you know, all this enthusiasm just that really shocked him to hear what his mother had said. But his mother had been a smoker for many years and she was dying of cancer. And he would go to visit her and he would talk to her about Jesus. And he knew from the churches he had been into that the Lord did heal people still today. And so he prayed and prayed that God would heal her, but it never happened. He got angry with God. He's asking God, why don't you heal her? And he said he heard God say in his heart, tell her who I am. He said, who are you? I am the God of the brokenhearted. I am the God who will hold her hand. Tell her that. So he did, and that was a consolation to her. And then the hospice where she was, it was a hospice where there were other patients as well in hospice. He would come there and he would just tell her stories from the Old Testament of Daniel and David and all of those stories, those beautiful stories in the Old Testament. And with his gift of being able to teach on these things, people would overhear this. And when they would hear him coming, they would come with their walkers and canes and wheelchairs and just to hear him tell these stories of the Old Testament. And he said to his mother, why won't you accept Jesus? And she said, in my home where I grew up, that, was, that name was used as a curse. And whenever you say that, it's like you're saying the very worst thing you could possibly say. He said, well, what if I use the Hebrew version of his name, Yeshua, which means Joshua? That would be okay. So he began to tell her the stories of Yeshua, the woman at the well, how he healed the lame like the paralytic in today's gospel, the blind, and so on. And eventually she, became, became, uh, she embraced forgiveness uh, of Christ, of Yeshua, of Jesus. She embraced the Christian faith before her death. Now in today's uh, first reading, we have a prophecy of Isaiah. And to think about the fact that there were two great liberations for the people of Israel. So about 1,500 years before Christ, Moses leads the people from their enslavement in Egypt across the desert to the promised land. It'd be around the year 1000 BC before Christ that King David would unite the kingdom. But about 500 years, a little more, the, the temple would be destroyed, the city destroyed, and the people would be taken to captivity in modern day Iraq and Babylon. But Isaiah is that one who's prophesying they're gonna be liberated from that captivity in Babylon, this second great libera liberation. They're gonna be brought back to their homeland, to Zion, the hill on which Jerusalem was built. They're gonna be brought back there. And what does Isaiah prophesy? He said, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not, here is your God. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared, 
Then the lame will leap like a stag, like today's gospel, and the tongue of the mute will sing. And there's going to be this highway. They're going to be shown, they're going to be led there. It's going to be called a holy way. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return. They'll enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. St. Justin, who was martyred in the year 155 AD for the faith, he had a dialogue with a Jewish man named Tryphon. And we still have this dialogue that he had, this written dialogue. And in this, he refers to this prophecy of Isaiah chapter 35. Streams will burst forth in the desert. The burning sands will become pools, thirsty ground, springs of water. Streams will burst forth in the desert. And Justice, in speaking to this, this man, Tryphon, he said, Christ is that stream of living water that flows from God. He sprang up in the desert wastes of ignorance of God. He who was born among your people cured those who were blind from birth and the deaf and the lame. By his word alone they leapt and heard and saw once more. He raised the dead and gave them new life. And by all his good works, prompted men to see him for who he is. So all these wonderful things. And we heard, as Luke often relates, that the people were astonished. They glorified God and said, we've seen incredible things today. And so Justin is writing to Tryphon, by all his good works, he prompted men to see him for who he is. He did all these things to convince those who were to believe in him that whatever bodily defects they might have, if they obeyed the teachings that he gave them, he would raise them up again at his second coming and make them whole and perfect and immortal. So we know that not every physical disability is healed. There are some. And these point to the realization that yes, all who believe in Christ will one day be restored, whole and entire, immortal, sharing in his immortality. That's what these prophecies pointed to as Brother Bob Fishman came to learn as he studied these prophecies, over 300 of them, they kept pointing again and again to this fulfillment in Jesus, who is from the tribe of Judah, of the lineage of David, who was born in Bethlehem, who suffered, who was spat upon, who rose again from the dead. All of these prophecies. He is the only one who, uh, whose coming was foretold. Bishop Sheen brings this out in his book on the life of Christ. It's only Christ was foretold. And if someone really did come from God, as different men have claimed to throughout history, if they really came from God, the least God could do would be to prepare for their coming, to announce his coming beforehand. And so we're remembering St. John the Baptist in these two weeks of Advent, who was that one who especially was calling people to prepare their hearts for the coming of the Lord. So my dear people, let us always be of heart. God said to the prophet Isaiah, to the people in their troubles, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God, he comes to save you. He comes to save you, he comes to save me. Here is your God. It is Jesus of Nazareth whose coming, whose first coming we are preparing for in Advent, but we're also remember that he will come again in glory and bring about that great and ultimate restoration of all of mankind, of all of uh, heaven, the heavens and the earth themselves will be uh, restored. Those whom the Lord has ransomed and returned will enter Zion singing. We can think of not the earthly Jerusalem, but the heavenly Jerusalem 
we will enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. <laughs> 